All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, my name is Rashad Milligan. This is the Road to 2K Subs. I am here joined today by UConn fan Tommy and South Carolina fan Terrell, a.k.a. Ashley Knuckles. Fellas, Carolina, baby. What's going on? How you doing, C? You know, loud, the loudness right there already, already making noise. No it's doubt. Shout out, to the, shout out to the whole women's basketball uh, fans, you know what I'm saying, for all the teams, you know what I'm saying, but... um. You know what I'm here. Okay, okay, Terrell. You know since, since I got you on camera now, let, let's do this on camera. All right, so you hit up my comments, right? I got Monica McNutt. First of all, first things first, shout out to Monica McNutt. Shout out Monica McNutt coming on. Who else Monica you know is going to do that when they at the top of the game, man? Like, who coming down to the people? I ain't even at 2K subscribers. She came down full with the people. So salute to Monica McNutt for doing that. And the WNBA playoffs at that. Um, yeah, shout out I, to her for that. I was working on Monica Nina for for like months, bro, for getting her on the channel. I finally get her on. I only have her for like 30 minutes. You know she on 80 shows on ESPN. So I get her for 30 minutes, bro, 20 minutes, really. And we talk about the playoffs for about the fifth, first 15 minutes. I have five minutes left. Tommy, here, here's a scenario. If I have someone who has called multiple UConn games last season, right, and I have five minutes, to talk about one team, and most of the subscribers are UConn subscribers. Which team do you think I'm gonna ask her about for five minutes? It's only one team you can ask about. So I do that, right? I'm now, see, that's the I'm, whole I'm thinking, whole, whole, I'm thinking whole, whole, hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Terrell, hold on, Terrell, hold on, Terrell. So, so I do that, right? And I'm like, man, I know the subscriber, they're gonna love this if they know who she is. And you know, and 98% of the comment section was, Rashad, good job, Rashad, we do it, we do it, and blah, blah, blah. Da, 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 great interview. And it's one person, and it's Terrell in the comment section. Rashad, I, the only question you asked was about UConn, and I can't believe this, this is a UConn channel. And it had a couple thumbs up, too. So the people <laughs> who thumbs it up, I'm looking at y'all, too. I had five minutes to ask about one more team. I wanted to address that on camera, so I, I, I wasn't going to address that in the camera. Well, I, I have some rebuttal for that right there. Go first, ahead. first, first of all, everybody knows UConn, you know, their fans is, you know, y'all have a big fan base. So, of course, everybody's going to want to hear about UConn. I mean, why not? You know, UConn, 11 championships, of course, they're always going to want to know about that. So I was like, you know, you got to look out for the little people sometimes, which I understand you only have five minutes because in the interview, as soon as you said South Carolina, the devil got right into work so fast. As soon as she said South Carolina, there was a pause in the video. Then it came back. And I'm like, well, what happened? Like, it was like, it's, to me, it seemed like it was more cut out the conversation, but really it was only a few seconds. So I kind of understood that. She didn't cut out. She, just, she was done. So I nah. <laughs> she said, she said, she said, said you know, Don is always going to, and then the internet went like, yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. Just, just my luck, but but go ahead, Tara. Yeah, so you know, I say that's that that was kind of a you know a loaded question, but like I say, you know, this year is really going to prove like that's why I say you know this year is, is like I'm really excited for this year because it's like like I said before, so much parity that we just can't say one team's going to win it all. So I, I think it's going to be some good battles this year. So I'm I'm looking forward to the good conversations and the the good trash talk that um you know rival teams will get to talk you know, against, amongst fans, you know, against each other when the season starts. Can I ask you a serious question about South Carolina? I'm just, yes, I, I'm, I'm true. Good. So where do you think they're going to put the Aaliyah Boston statue? Because, I mean, they're just giving them out. So we, <laughs> Listen, we, Aaliyah, Aaliyah Boston, only way Aaliyah Boston would deserve a statue is, is if she cleaned up the rings until she leaves. Now, if she won a couple of rings before she leaves, but, yeah, we wouldn't mind. But the reason why Asia got her – um. Her statue was because, you know, for the for the long amount of years that we had a, a basketball team, we never had a good squad. We never had a five a five star player. So she was our first five star player and our first five star player to bring us a championship. So I feel with with just those accolades alone, she does she deserves a statue. So yeah, that's that that's that's you know one question to your answer. I hope that, that satisfy you, but um, you know that's just what it is. Nah, it's all it's all jokes. I, I want to say that though, because I, I crack a lot of jokes about the players. All of those women, and in the W, all of the women, and NCAA, 
they elite ball players. So, you know, I might, I might crack jokes and, you know, I might say, oh, they're not good, they're trash. But in real life, they're going to get out here and bust on everybody, like most people. So, uh, you know, before I, I don't want, I don't want no hate, no hate mail. I think all these ladies really ball. I can appreciate uh, that. I could pre- I could appreciate that being that you know I can't stand your team because I could always debate against a realistic a realistic person who's keeping it real. You know what I'm saying? As far as in with their team. I'm not saying everybody's not like that, but I'm just saying when I debate, I like to keep facts and stats into the situation. Not about what happened in the past 10 years ago, 20 years ago, but basically what's going on right now. No, nah, we so, can't erase history now. Nah, hold up now. Nah. See, because if you had 11 championships, you'd be like, but back when, because I mean, you holding on to that little one. That, you, you no, I'm not going to see. Yeah, I'm going to hold on to it, but I'm not going to use it for an argument because it's not about what we did before. It's about what we got going on right now. That's like, if we was trash right now, I couldn't say nothing about that one championship because that's in the past. Because right now, we can't win nothing. But and then most recently, nice. you can't beat us. So I'm with you. I'm with we. If we on the right now, I'm with you because y'all, you, y'all couldn't beat us right now. So I mean, I mean, I mean, to each his own. I mean, you say that, but you know, the year before we did, we did kind of. Which one is it? We I mean, I, I mean, you know, I mean, you're going to the past because you're talking about last year. You know what I'm saying? If you want, if you want to say that, so if you're gonna go, if you're gonna throw last year too, I'm gonna that. go the year before that. Most recently, most recently, we beat y'all. Paid, yeah. paid, yeah. hit that shot. But, Am I right or am I wrong? Did it take for a lucky off the backboard three pointer to tie nah, it up? Nah, I don't think that's not yeah. Lucky. I mean, you know, everybody don't get that shot. That was a lucky goal, right? Hey, there. Y'all, so, y'all, y'all, y'all better rub the rub the Apollo wood. Whatever y'all gotta do, get y'all some luck because y'all needed it. And hey, when, hey, y'all... it's a new year. It's a new year. Whole new different squad that y'all gonna have to see. So um, we are gonna see what's popping this year. You know what I'm saying? We got that. We got that big Eiffel Tower in the middle. We got that number one recruit class coming in. You know what I'm saying? So it's gonna be. It's gonna be a lot of problems for y'all, and it's gonna be problems for us with y'all. But with y'all, I see y'all game. Y'all game is y'all three point shooters. If we can hold y'all to under eight three pointers made. Game is ours in the back pocket, man. Guaranteed, because it won't be no driving coming in there with those towers down there. Because it's just gonna be. That's all you're gonna see is the balls going into the stands. Boom, 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 balls getting blocked. We don't wanna we don't want the crowd to think we playing volleyball. We want them to know we playing basketball. So keep it out the paint. We won't have to do y'all dirty like that. So keep it all mid-range behind threes and y'all might have a chance. This sound you sound real confident. I hope they as confident as you because they got you know they ain't win the last hey, one. Only thing That's you gotta do, saying. only thing you gotta do is go to YouTube and look at page um Page little Instagram page. She has videos of her on there with game cop um players, her and AZ, and you know, they they all going back and forth about who's gonna win between those those two teams. So yeah, check it out. It's good, you know, it, it's something good to check out. Yeah, I'm sure she shouted out a little community service. She's trying to get up her name, image, and likeness. She had to do a little, mm-hmm. little service there. Oh, yeah, man, you know, AZ coming in, you know, y'all have all that generation generational talent. You do know if y'all don't win no championships with those with those two players y'all have on your team. Your university is going to be looking real suspect. It's going to be under See, the investigation. The difference between us and y'all is that y'all y'all are banking on us not winning, and we know no, we're we not. Like, no, no, no. Like the only way, all, we know we won't win. First of all, we hoping. First of all, we hoping y'all make it in this little Atlantic tournament coming. We hoping y'all make it through. Who y'all got to play to reach to us? You know what I'm saying? Once y'all make it to us, that's going to be our first meeting. That's going to be the little. That's going to be the little test to see where we at and see where y'all at. So if we if we put the spanking on y'all, then that means we're gonna have to see y'all around towards the end of the year before the tournament stop. And we have to spank y'all again just to make let y'all know stay in the you know, stay in the little 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 sister spot. And we won't have to do y'all dirty like big sisters do, you know what I'm saying? So you know you really hey, that, that, well that's the question though. If if y'all face each other three times, do you think it's a sweep on either end? And I'll ask, you know, just both fans what, what they think. No, I it. think it's a two out of I think it's a two out of three, UConn. I mean, they get they got they got good they got good ball players and there's gonna be a couple games with them the outside shots might not be falling and they they're heavy in the paint, you know. I I, I can see that. I mean, they gonna re, they gonna they gonna rebound. A lot of offensive rebounds, they just can't shoot the three. You know, if they get the offensive rebound, if they don't get fouled on the putback, you know, they're gonna just turn the ball back over. But at the same time, I mean, I, I think it's two out of three. UConn just fundamentally is a better ball club. It's, it's just a better Me, ball club. My opinion on it, and I'm going to be more realistic, I would say if it, I feel it would be a split. If we see each other three times, I feel it would be a split those first two games, and that third game will determine 
who's going to be, you know, going to take the series as far as in how many wins out of a lot of three. It's UConn. Y'all can't stop with the big dogs. Come on now. No, I'm just like, I, hey, you know, I mean, all that sounds good, but, you know, hey, we're going to find yeah. out what's going on. Listen. Look, it was a, it was a struggle. It was a struggle for y'all. It was a struggle for y'all last year, which was a struggle for us because we lost the game. But I just feel this year is going to be. It's going to come down. I feel it's going to come down to whoever make the most mistakes in that fourth quarter. Because I believe you know between both teams, the talent it's undeniable that it's going to be a close game. I don't think it's going to be no blowout like that year when we beat y'all by like nineteen and we held y'all to like. No matter if I think we beat y'all by eighteen, something like that. We held y'all to like two points in one quarter. I don't think we're gonna do y'all like that again. But um, yeah, I feel it's gonna be a tight game. We'll see. And um, also, I just wanted to shout out uh, AC Fudd. You guys mentioned uh, name, image, and likeness. We talked about this beforehand. But uh, AZ Fudd, she recently signed uh, a deal with Chipotle. Chipotle. So salute to AZ Fudd for that. And also, well, it was on. Um, AZ Fudd, congratulations on that. Um, I was reading today. Um. Aaliyah Boston, it might be on it might be on the page when you get around to it, but Aaliyah Boston just signed uh with with the company too. I believe it's a shoe company, I'm not for sure. But um I, I, if it's on the page, I'm pretty sure you'll you'll see what it is. Okay, for yeah. sure. And um Jaden Fields too, uh Justin Fields, little brother. She also signed with Chipotle. And then on the men's side, Imani Bates just uh signed with uh the rock agency, you know, Jay Z's mm -hmm. sports agency yeah. and stuff like that. So I don't know. It's pretty cool seeing stuff like that, especially like on a high school level. Like they have Mikey Williams in the 2K commercial, and um, right. and then uh, Jiggy Jiggy Easy uh, Izzy from the Mamba Academy. She's in the new Gatorade commercial and stuff like that in high school. She's like what 14, 13. So uh, it's kind of I think the name, image, and likenesses. I think it's going to be really big for the W specifically. Uh, one, they don't have to step their game up because these kids can be making more off of their off of their deals than they are off of their first year salary. But then it also makes people want to fall like, you know, if you fall in love with AZ at Chipotle, you don't want to go to our game. So watch them no matter what. So I think this is going to be a, a nice win-win situation. Well, I think I mean, it's only going to be but, like that for a few players. So you have to think like okay. for the superstars, you know, for the superstars, it's like, oh, okay, they're going to make more money. But for like the average typical player, so say, um, hmm, who's a good example? I guess uh, Ashley Jones. I, I never know how to say her last name from Iowa State. She might not mm. be the biggest name outside of the state of Iowa, right? But right. she's going to be a top five pick in the WNBA next year. So it's like perhaps she's probably going to make more money after the draft as opposed to now off of endorsements in Iowa. Yeah, I, I, look, I look at it. I look at it as um, it's a win-win for the uh, for the students in the school because I would feel if they're getting paid, that'll keep them maybe that'll keep them in in um, college a couple of years longer instead of just jumping straight to the WNBA, because that's what a lot of them go for, is for the financial, you know what I'm saying, for the money, you know, to help benefit them and their family or whatever. But um, I think that's kind of a win-win for both, because, you know, the school will get to have the, the, uh, the player there maybe a year or two longer. And then they, uh, while they're there, they'll be making money instead of just playing. So do y'all think Paige is staying all four years? She would be smart, too. There's yeah, no rush. You, you get, I, you, I mean... Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I think I think most people get the the goat and the greatness that if that comes from out it really you gotta sustain it when you get to the W, but it really is built in the NCAA. And if she's gonna get paid, if she's paid is gonna be one of the highest paid athletes, if not the highest paid college athlete. Going into the W, I mean Sue Bird was not making she was making what like two hundred thousand dollars, give or take, something like that. They're not gonna be able to pay pay Paige the way she's gonna get paid in NCAA. And that's where you that's where you really get the most coverage. Like, you know, you can really grow your brand and take it there. It would be foolish to rush out of UConn and go to the W and be overlooked, less media, less opportunities to get that money. I it just when it wouldn't make sense. Right. I, I agree with that. And also hold on to Ro before you go. Um just just to address this note. Uh, you know, for the people who are like, oh, you just, you kind of South Carolina. I just did a Stanford reaction to Kiki Irif and the incoming freshman about a week ago. So check that out. Uh, that's Stanford. And then I reacted to Juju Watkins and them uh, as well, who are both all uncommitted. So those are non UConn, non South Carolina. People are going to find something to complain about. But, anyways, continue, Terrell. So, Tommy, uh, I got a question. Um, what do you think about your schedule this year? 
I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a UConn schedule. I think there's some there's some in that middle. I think when we play South Carolina, we play Tennessee. Like I think right in there, back to back. I think I mean it's, it's it doesn't matter who we play. Like if you're trying to get to say like we got the Big East, and you know the Big East is going to be the Big East, right? Like it, we're going to dominate the Big East. But I feel like if you put us in the SEC, we would dominate there too. Like it's not. Tommy, we're, we're, Tommy, 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 Tommy. Last week, <clears throat> excuse me, last season, you guys had a week in the SEC, right? Arkansas, um, first loss of the season. Then went to Tennessee. Tennessee, Paige gets hurt. She's limping, hits the game winner with a minute left. Squeak out of Knoxville with the win. Don't do win, the SEC like that. That, 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 was just, that was just your one week in the I'm, SEC. I'm just saying, and then Arkansas, I mean, Arkansas, yeah. There was, it was, look. The ball, the ball was falling for Arkansas that day. I mean, Chelsea Dungy, she played a really, she played a really great game that game. The rest of the team they contributed. It was a really good ball game. But and we, and we dominate Arkansas, blowing out by thirty clear. every time. I want to be clear: it doesn't matter if we play a Mars. UConn is the measuring stick. We prove like it doesn't matter who we play in exhibition or we get and you get to those places. Because last year we might we might have squeaked past Tennessee, but we beat them. If it was two points, we beat them. If it was South Carolina, we beat them. Like the, the only person that really, the only teams that really could be talking that mess is Arizona and Arkansas. And Arkansas, I'm, I'm not, I can't say they barely won because they won. It was a good game. It was, a, it was a good game. They played Arizona. They gave us what we've been looking. They gave us what everybody's been trying to do. But we still beat Baylor, no matter how you want to put it. We beat South Carolina, like. We're the measuring stick, so y'all can play all those games and still try to beat UConn, but you, but it, you, it don't matter. I don't believe y'all the measuring stick anymore. They don't. They didn't even give y'all the number one preseed. Did it? They're not even putting y'all in the number one spot for the preseed right now. That's fine. Hey, but but everyone compares them. Everyone everyone wants parity. When you think of parity, who are we? Who where does the parity come to? Who who what's the constant? Who's the state? Because we could go back to you know Muffet McGraw had Notre Dame there. You know you had. Duke at one point was up there playing, you know, the, the parody really would, it, it would be Tara Vanderveer and Gino Ariema. Don came through the last, Don has been at South Carolina for quite some time. I mean, now they're in the conversation, but she, I mean, she hasn't blown everything out. She won a championship. She did what she was yeah, supposed to do. And, and, and I'm explain why. And that's because, you know, at those, at those years when y'all was dominating with parody, like you said, the word parody comes in is because Muffet McGraw, um, y'all, Tennessee, y'all used to get all the good five-star players. If you think, if you think back, really, those was the schools that was getting the top five-star players or the top classes. So now that it's kind of sprinkled out, now you got better, te- you got better, you got better players on different teams. So it's not easy for UConn to just go to Louisville and blow them out by 20, 30, or forty like they used to do in years past. So I it, never, that's really- it never was easy. You talking about years past, like. Do you think about teams? There, there's always been really good players in the league. We just haven't there haven't been exposure. Jody Conrad at Texas had great ball clubs. Great the ten, UConn has just been over the last when we talk about the last what year couple of years. 20. UConn has really had some of the best teams ever. Like when you talk about Sue Bird, Swim Cash, Diana Tarazi, Tamika, Asia, all on one team. There's no college team better than that. You know what I mean? Like there's we we're really just the best. Like it's really it's not even. They are the measuring stick. Everyone wants to be like them. Like in those teams, there was parity back then. We were just that much better. Like there was a lot of talent going to other good schools. Just UConn was a better, well-oiled machine. Well, that's like when y'all had Crystal Dangerfield in the back court. Y'all had um, y'all had Crystal Dangerfield. Y'all had Megan Walker. Y'all had um, um, Christian Williams. I, I think I'm saying her name right. Um, y'all had Olivia Nelson. Christine. Uh, Christine. Christine. Okay, I'm sorry. Christine. Um, y'all had Olivia Nelson the daughter. Y'all I mean y'all had a squad in 2019, but yet y'all got mopped the floor. Y'all got the floor mopped. Y'all man, look here. Y'all was too. All right, to all, right, all right, all right, all right. We 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 can stop bringing up the 2019 game. That uh, that that. I'm I'm calling the ref coming in. No more 2019 game references between South Carolina and UConn. Continue. So, like, like I said, you know, as far as in the parity, that's when. The gap started being closed on UConn is when these other schools started getting these top recruits and better uh, recruiting classes. Because you know, with South Carolina, man, the most we ever, the highest we got before we got um, uh, Asia Asia Wilson was what um, Tiffany Mitchell. She was what a four star, maybe a three star. 
So we wasn't getting those kind of athletes that could compete with five-star athletes and players and number one recruits. And because you got to think, Geno classes, they always had top class. He was always had dogs on his team. So when you got lower, not trying to make the athletes or, the, you know, these girls sound, diminish their skills, but, you know, it's just levels to this. And Gino always kept that high level players. So once other teams started getting those high level players, that's when you started noticing it was teams was able to come in and sneak out wins against Gino because back then the only way you was going to sneak and win out of Gino, it had to be a top team like uh, Notre Dame or Tennessee or, Stanford. you know what I'm saying? It wasn't really too many of those, you know what I mean? Those low, low, lower tier schools getting any kind of upset wins against UConn. And if it did, it was very rare. Like when Mississippi state uh, got that little win, it was like, and that's because they had, you know, different athletes on a team that could do different things. It wasn't just like one star and the rest was pick up, pick up players. Well, I think it's I, rare. I, I don't think it's, wait, I'm sorry, Tommy. I, I don't think it's any different now. And and that's something that, you know, uh, I, the talks that, that we've had before, <laughs> talks that we've had before of like, you know, where, where I said, you know, there's more parody and, and it's more sprinkled out. And then you're talking about, um, you don't think that UConn, can go into a regular match and then be upset by a lower seed. I still don't think it's like that. I just think on the top, I don't know, because I've also heard the the, the Tommy uh, argument with the, you know, with the Notre Dames and the Baylors and Tennessees and stuff like that. I still don't know if it's been like this good up top. Like it's, there's eight, 16 legit teams, eight, 12 legit teams. I don't know if it was eight, 12 legit teams back then. I think it was like four. It was like right. Stanford, Notre Dame, UConn, Baylor. Like, okay, Tommy, correct, correct me, correct me. But, then, but I mean, but then you got to think back that there were there were years when there was the Oklahomas. There was there there were others. Oklahoma's the Texas. Like there shout, were teams that may not be consistent, right? Like those some of those players might not peak. The talent has always been there. Geno takes his players and he pushes them to a certain limit. Before the, and they peak before, or I'm gonna say I don't want to say peak, but they start to excel before other players do. Some of those players, those programs only have two good seasons because it took them to, to until they got to be a junior to have the confidence to be to win a game or to do those small things. Just like I said earlier in the game, all of these women when they make it to this, those schools only recruit at AAU tournaments at a certain level. All of these young ladies are elite players. Gino gets the ones that are the most malleable, the ones that are hungriest, that want to get in there, and he molds them. Now, Don has done a good job of getting some, some ballers in there, but it's the program. It's the, it's, it's the, he is like the Coach K of women's basketball. It, it's his program that turns those great players or those good players into great players, and that's why they're sustainable when they go and compete in the WNBA. And, and you know, I, I'm not, it's always been really good, but the coaching and the program is what, what sets them apart from everyone else. And, you know, hopefully Don could get her program there, but they're not there yet. And I don't even think it's, when it it's comes, not even hard. When it, when it comes to our program, like if you look back, like on, uh, you know, maybe like right before uh, we won our first title, you know, you had, you had Tiffany Mitchell, you had uh, Alina Coach, you had uh, Asia Wilson. We just didn't really have those superstars to get us over the hump and to those that transfer that year when we got Kayla Davis and Alicia Gray. That's what kind of helped, you know, when we got those two shooters that helped space the floor, that's what got us over the hump to win that championship. And if, like I said, that's when those good athletes, you know, those good five stars, because both of them was five star players for their, you know, for their, um, their recruiting uh, college. So when they came in, that brought us over the hump. So that's why I say, you know, when you have, Less of talent when you could get that 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 premier player in to help with that one big time play you got that kind of brings your program over the hump and that's what Dawn has done since we won that title we started getting like right now like I think we wouldn't have been as good as we was if we didn't have that number one recruiting class with um uh, uh, Lena ba- I mean uh, Aaliyah Boston and um and the rest of those girls on there we wouldn't even be at to the point where we at right now because they're they're the ones who help um. Kiki, uh, Kiki Herbert Harrigan, and um, damn, I can't think of her name. Just, it just escaped my mind. Uh, uh, Taisha Harris. Once you know, once they came in, that kind of helped them. Even though that year was shortened, but um, yeah, that's what brought our program over the hump by getting that number one class in. And now that we have another one coming in, I feel that's going to definitely help 
because we have everybody returning plus them coming in that's really going to help push us because we couldn't we didn't really have a big to come off the bench to help behind Boston you know what I'm saying so now that we have that we can either start both oh. of them or just play one of them Tommy I, I, see, I, I see you want to respond I see you want to respond real quick uh, to interject on, on something that Tommy was talking about earlier with development and turning good players into great players and that's why you know they kind of dominate the W uh, obviously in coverage you know um, you know especially with ESPN being in Bristol Connecticut a lot of times you know the, the coverage can kind of be you know a little biased towards the, the UConn alum and stuff like that so I just want to point this out out of the remaining teams who are some of the best players that, that we're seeing out there on the floor uh, from what we saw last night in Connecticut you have John Quill Jones Alyssa Thomas uh, that's Maryland. That's uh, DB Dewana Bonner. I, I can't. I can't remember where Dewana Bonner went to school right now. Um, sure. Bre- sure. Brian January. Uh, you know, except like none of those are really. <clears throat> excuse me. Are really Huskies? Uh, Chicago. You know, of course they have Dolson uh, who went there, but you know you, you still have um, Kalia Copper who went to Rutgers. Um, Candace Parker, Sloot, and uh, Joker had eighteen assists. A triple double, eighteen assists. Are you serious? And then you know, on the Vegas side, you got um, you got Asia Wilson, you got Kelsey Plum, who played a really good game. Washington product, uh, Phoenix. You know, you, you have DT in the mix, but Skylar Diggins and BG were kind of like their primary kind of options first, mm-hmm. and then DT because DT's coming back from injury, and she's a you know on the other side of forty. So you know, what I'm saying so just to put that out, uh, a lot of the best players right now in the semifinals for this year aren't UConn alums. Oh, just to put that out, that's a side note. Go ahead, Tommy. They're not, but they 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 were in, they were in the mix. And I would say this, and I'm going to leave it alone. Um, Dawn has a competitive program. She's, she's created a competitive program. She doesn't have a winning program. That's what Gino has. And I think there's a difference between a competitive program and a winning program. Uh, and hopefully, well, I mean, I want to say hopefully, you know, I wish the best for her, and maybe one day she'll have a winning program. But now they just com- they compete. But they I don't feel well. I don't feel I don't feel competitors win championships. So we have a championship. So I don't feel that's compete. Yeah, we you, took you, it. We won you it. Have one a single like you have a championship like you have one. So you're competitive. You compete. You play in the. We, you're always in the conversation, but you're not a winning team. Even when you talk about when you isolate UConn's losses, like it's easy for you to say, oh, that one game, and then that one game, and it's very isolated. Like it's a win. That's a winning club. That's a championship winning team. They are, they're, they're winning ball clubs. Now South Carolina, yeah. they win games and they compete at a high level, but for they're the, not a for the last For the last six years, for the last six years, y'all been competing. Y'all haven't been winning. So y'all right now, y'all competing with the rest of us. But you can't compare, you can't compare what we what we do to what you do we're different like we have 11 championships and you might have won one more recently than us but even then like if you look at our record over the last if you look at the records cumulative records over from the time dawn started to from when gino if you the year dawn started from and you compare uconn and south carolina up to there it's no comparison it's a winning program and a competitive program like you see the difference if you want to look at the stats and I'm not sure what those numbers are, but I think Don's been there for what ten years now. Um, yes. Give or take. Yeah. yeah. So if you look at Gino's record over the last ten years, and you look at Don's over the last, Don's is a competitive record, and Gino's is a winning record. Well, Gino got inducted into the Gino, Hall of Fame. I mean, how long? How long, Gino? How many years Gino been um, coaching at uh, UConn? Upward of thirty. Upward okay, of thirty. So he he for one he got a big gap. So of course, I mean, when Don came in, she had to prove herself to, to get the talent. That she had he did the same thing that year. He did that same thing back in the nineties with Rebecca Lobo. He didn't have no five stars. I understand, stars. but he he also has like a twenty year jump on Don too. You know what I'm saying? Like and Don has been coaching. Years. And Don, Don has been coaching. Yeah, I think she was coaching back uh, back at Temple. So when Don, so back in the back in the early two thousands and the, when the W was starting, Don was Don was the head coach at Temple. She's not new to coaching. Hey, she's been, all right, Carolina. guys, I have it pulled up. I'm about to pull it up. Hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. okay. This is it. But you got to understand, up, Temple, yo. Temple, that name right there is not going to, that's not going to draw any kind of. But they was, they, they, they went, they went to the uh, Sweet 16, I believe. At least, right. They had a good team. Candace Dupree, Candace Dupree was really good for them. They were a good ball club. Okay, uh, but that's like, that's what one roster. I mean, you got to think, UConn, 
that that that's a brand name. That's you know that's automatically kids want to go there to play. Well, so he, of course you're gonna always get the talent. Name is, is what Tommy is saying. I, yeah, I, 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 I understand. And that, I agree Tommy. with that. And I right. agree with that. I definitely agree with that. But the point I'm trying to make is being that he he established himself to have those kind of of uh, players. Of course, you're going to be successful compared to a person well, getting to a program who could who could start getting right, those right, kind right. Of well, okay. Well, well, let's look at it. Let's look at it. We have it pulled up now. All right. So this is Geno's first year, eighty-five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It took him ten years to get a championship. We just counted it. Okay. Here's uh, Don at South Carolina. All right. Let me scroll down. Scroll down. Scroll down. Scroll down. Joker, where is the list? Why is the website, uh, um, um, South Carolina website, get it together? Get it no, together. Exactly. Who website. was running that website? They need to get the info together. There we go. Here we go. All right. So, do you want to start at the Temple years or do you want to start at South Carolina? Well, I mean, she was a coach today. Hey, well, if we're if we, if we going to go by her being a coach, you have to start at Temple. But if okay. you're going to start where she can start getting good talent, then you're going to have to go to South Carolina. No, that's not the same. Because UConn wasn't a big name program. Nah, come on. You, you, you proving the point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Dang, dang, I got to count backwards. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Seventeen years uh it took her in coaching to get a championship. It took Gino ten years. At South Carolina, it took her one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It took her nine years at South Carolina. Okay, that's not bad. And well, yeah, I mean, that's not bad. And if you look, you know, at, if you look at her record, and if you look at from, oh, so she took over South Carolina from 08, so from, from 08 up until today, if you look at their overall record compared to UConn's overall record, it's a competitive record it's, versus a winning record. At, at South Carolina, she is 331 wins and 103 losses. And then Gino is like 1,000 wins right now. Yeah, he has 1,000 wins and 100 losses. But like I said, I still feel that's like that's like a loaded. That's that's that's. I mean, because like I say, when she was at, just look at the name of the school. She was like, you're not going to get nah. the kind of earlier. Players. Earlier at the beginning of the conversation, you said we were going to deal with stats. We was yeah. That's what I'm saying. We going by. I'm going uh, also, by, Terrell. You, also, you, Terrell. You, to, right. to Tommy's point. To Tommy's point. Don Staley was Don Staley. Like when she started like coaching, you know what I'm saying? Like it's one of the greatest players ever. Like you know, yeah, no okay, matter what your, school you at, you should be able name, to get a couple of but your name is also going to carry you more when you start having a winning tradition. Kids did not want to come really play for her until that year that we won, until the year that we won that championship when we started getting those transfers coming, like big name transfers. The only big name we ever had was um, was um, 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 Asia Wilson. The only. But, you, but, but that's the point right there is that she she was she couldn't win. She couldn't take players and mold them into champions. She. You know, all these players had to come in, and Gino molded his program to be that. You're saying that she had to get the five stars. He turned players into five stars. Uh, what what players? What players did Gino have that he molded? Can you name a couple? All of them. What do you, What do you mean? Hey, all you of got, them, right? And, and a lot of those names been big time players, right? He he made a lot of people big too. Stephanie, I mean, even no, no, if you no, look no, at no, Stephanie, no, no, no. they came they came into the league with talent. He just helped mold the talent. He didn't make the talent. The talent and came Don, there with Don, him. That's Don why he couldn't recruited. do the same thing. Don couldn't do the same thing. Why? Because those kind of players didn't want to go to Temple. They didn't want to come because to Temple. They wanted to go Gino. play for UConn. They wanted to play for Baylor. They wanted to play for but, all but, the but, Okay, but, but Terrell, to your point, but Terrell, to your point, what was UConn in 1984? 84? I can't, I, well, I don't know what kind, I can't think that far back. That's for my time as far as when watching women's basketball. So I really don't know what it was like back then. I, I, can, I can take a wild gander because I wasn't even on the earth then, but I could take a wild gander. In 1984, no one cared about UConn women's basketball. So it's just I'm like, sure. so, 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 so that's who all was, I'm saying. It's who, like, was, who was the powerhouse back in that time? 
shoot, probably like probably Louisiana Tech. It was probably yeah, like LA. Yeah, La Tech. Yeah. La Tech. Probably La Tech in them. Or USC. US probably USC yeah. or, or or La Tech. Yeah, well, maybe USC. I think I, I think I do remember hearing something about uh USC back in the eighties, if I'm correct. I could be wrong, but I, I do believe hearing them having uh having good squads around that. I time mean it, it wasn't twelve and fifteen Yukon. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 that's all I was saying. That's all I'm saying. It's like, but, you know, you Gino know, flipped, like, Gino flipped the program that was nothing into something, you know. And that's and, and then, and uh, but like, eventually, but eventually, though, to Terrell's defense, you know, when you're talking about once he gets into the, all of this, it's like then he's getting all the top players, you know, easily because it's just off the name. But the thing that you can credit with Gino with to go to Tommy's point. Is that yeah, the product because Gino you know, yeah, built he it? Built so, it. Yeah. So I mean, I, I, I see both sides. I see both sides, but I at the end of the what, day, it should be easier for Don off rip to to recruit players at the beginning of her coaching career because she's Don Staley. Because if Sue Bird, let me say, if, if if Sue Bird retires this year, right, and she wants to go work, and, and she goes and takes over the program at Georgia State at Clark Atlanta. All the, did you, she might hey you know what I'm saying we she she got the sauce we might see you know we might see the Panthers in the in, in the final four you know what I mean like it just it, but hey, that, that that's power not power. the case though in the um in the swag shout out to the swag you know what I'm saying shout out to uh to Angel if you're watching Angel uh but yeah uh you know they got Coop over there at Texas Southern who's the champion who runs that conference it's Jackson State and Tamika Reed shout out to Tamika Reed. You know, I was just, I just realized something that I forgot. I forgot Taya Cooper had played for us. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I it, forgot it was, all about it. It was one like, of her I three really, stops. It was one of her yeah, three stops. Yeah, I literally, I literally forgot all about that. that she did play. You know, and, and I had Taya Cooper on the channel on, like, Sunday. But I only talk about UConn players, Terrell. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm joking. But I'm saying, it, it even slipped my mind, because if I would have thought about it, I'd like, Rashawn, why you didn't even ask her anything about South Carolina? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it, it, slipped, it totally slipped my mind. I was like, wow, I forgot she played for us. But I guess it's, she didn't make a, a good enough impact to remember. Could be but that, but, you know, It was just out. one of her three stops. So, you know, it's like a lot of stops. And I think she was yeah, at Baylor for, like, what, two years when, when she yeah, transferred she again? So, and, you know, I think everybody kind of remembers the fact that Baylor was last. Baylor was when, you know, that, that UConn game happened. Well, okay, I already talked to Tommy about this, but I'll just throw it out. This is always – this will always be a thing in women's basketball for the next 30 years. 2020, Baylor comes in and, and whoops you guys, but there's also Oregon with Sabrina Inescu. And y'all know that I'm a Sab fan. I'm still standing by Sab. And then you had South Carolina, like Terrell always says. Who would have won, in your opinion? Are you talking about the pandemic year? Yeah, the 2020. This is going to be something that people are going to talk about for the next 10 to 30 years. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of those years where it was kind of where it was on, it was on any baller's night, right? Like, who, whoever goes out there and who just plays the hardest. Because, I one, I'll never count. It wasn't UConn's best year, but I'll never count them out because, I mean, they're a good ball club, right? Like, they, they, they're they a good ball club, and they're well coached. Um, but those other teams were, again, very competitive. Um, so, of course, I'm going to go with I'm gonna go with my Huskies, but I think Oregon really had uh, – Come on, Tommy. Oh, my gosh. You were doing so well, Tommy. You were nah, coming on, dog. Come on, dog. I'm never going to waver. I'm never going to come. You were doing so well, Terrell. He was doing so well. I was like – Because for me, on the outside looking in, with no team, with no affiliation, I thought it was between those three teams. And that's what everybody else was saying is between those three teams. So the fact you still saying you kind of like, no, oh, come on. My Go opinion ahead. that year, my opinion that year was between Carolina and Oregon. Those were the two best well-oiled machine running teams at that time. So I believe it was between those two. Now those two would have ran against each other. I don't know. I think it would have came between Sabali, whoever, whoever would have, whoever big would have played the best. I believe would have won that series. So I really don't know because Sabrina Nescu was a monster. It was, you know what I mean? She was putting up triple doubles like it was no tomorrow. So it was kind of like it was it was it was a throw up because I feel that year we was we was rolling through everybody that year. We had that one loss against Indiana, and then once we played Baylor in that little uh, cross that little uh, I think it was a little Maui Invitational, 
once we beat them by 15, we started rolling after that. We didn't lose no more games. So we was beasting everybody. Yeah, I think I, I, if it wasn't UConn, I would give it to Oregon too. Wow. Y'all had a good team that year, but I mean, y'all did end up with a banner somehow that year. So at least you take what you could get. Yeah, when 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 we put y'all over our knee for like eighteen points and two points to quarter, that's when we got that banner. So yeah, it was well worth it. Cause we was that's dying it. to beat y'all. It, it's been so long. Y'all was y'all was spanking us so much that we was like, yo, we got to get one. So when we got that one, it felt like you know the little weight was lifted off our shoulders. So. That's why I, I love my recruit class that came in because all of them was recruited by Gino. And they told, they was like, we don't want to play for Gino. We want to play against Gino. And that's why they're my babies. Because you don't hear too many players say, I don't want to play for UConn. I want to beat UConn. So when you got dogs who think like that, you can always be on my squad because I love players who just don't like UConn because I don't like UConn. So, so yes. That's, more like, that's like saying, I don't want my text to come up blue. I want them to come up green. Like, you hey, know I'm, I mean? I'm just going to be real. I'm a hater. I'm a hater. There's no, there's no shit yeah, to yeah. I'm not going to dance around it. I don't like y'all. I'm a hate. Yes, I'm going to hate. Y'all could win 30 championships. I'm still going to hate. You know what I'm saying? That's that, that just what it is. And when we're not a good team, when we're not a good team, you'll stop hating us. That's how I know we're doing what we're supposed to do. So it's yeah. all right. No, even if y'all turn out to be bad for like 10 years, I'm still going to hate the name because of that name, UConn. Just the brand UConn put so many hurt. That's how good, that's how good we are. Two years later, you still be salty. Yeah, y'all broke a lot of people's hearts. You're more than you salty. Yes, exactly. Over those 11 years of y'all winning them championships, y'all broke a lot of hearts. Y'all had a lot of fans destroyed. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, now that y'all on this little six-year drought, it feels good. Like, it feels real good for y'all not to be on top of that mountain no more. Right now, y'all, like, right at y'all, y'all dangling from the top. Y'all at the edge. Y'all reaching for it with, like, two to three other teams. So that's what I like. As long as it stays like that, I am good. And even though, uh, even like I said, it's about eight teams. It's not four. Yeah, well, eight it's about teams. Eight I teams eight. That, can, that can make a run. Mm. Uh, I don't, I, I love, you know. Look, look, here it goes. Here it goes. I'm going to do it again. Stanford, defending champs. Indiana, okay. Louisville, okay. Uh, uh, South Carolina, UConn, okay. That's five. Maryland, that's six. Mm -hmm. That's six. That's at least okay. six. NC State. It's, oh, thank you, thank you so much, Tommy. Yeah. NC State. What a, what the heck am I doing? NC State. I'll put I'll, I'll put NC State before Louisville because I don't I don't know if Haley Van Lift can yeah, carry that. Like, I, I was kind of I was kind of on the when he said Louisville, I kind of cringed a little bit because I just feel they lost a little something and I don't think they're gonna Dana be there like they were. Dana Evans with the glue. Like, I don't, I don't know. I, oh, I don't man. know. Louisville is going to be a toss up. I, actually, I think Duke is going to show better this year than, than Louisville. He, I think he said Duke that last time. Really he said that last time, man. I don't, I don't know about Duke. I don't know about Duke. Just remember, I think it's going to take remember him. Remember, I said it. Yeah. You, you said it twice. You said it twice. It, yeah. it's, on it's on wax. You, you've been well, on Duke from day one. Go ahead. Yeah, I think Duke is going to be better this year than Louisville. I think Duke is going to be better this year than Louisville. I think Duke is going to be better this year than Louisville. I think Duke is going to be better this year than Louisville. I think Duke is going to be better this year than Louisville. I think Duke is going to be better this year than Louisville. I think Duke is going to be better this year than Louisville. I think Duke is going to be better this year than Louisville. I think Duke is going to be better this year than Louisville. I think Duke so we've been talking about this recruiting class 2021 all off season. I had no idea or I didn't know. I just overlooked it. North Carolina had four kids in the top 20. I didn't know that. Yeah. They had four yeah. kids. Like, like, like I knew mm -hmm. about T. Key's uh, little sister from uh, Tennessee. I knew about her going yeah. to uh, uh, Carolina, but I didn't know they had two or three other kids in the top 20. So, Yeah, they, they had a pretty good recruiting class too. You know what I'm saying? But um. I just appreciate who we picked up, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, me being that I was scouting those girls, and once I seen Oregon, Shania Oregon, Rivers. That, 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 that's my eighth team. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just had to throw them in. Before <laughs> that, that's eight. That's eight. Scout, you know, that's I, eight. I, I, was, I had scouted a lot of the, uh, the kids that, you know, that was picked up by a lot of these teams. And I was, you know, I was, I was more impressed with, you know, who we picked up than a lot of more other teams. But, you know, maybe it's for me being biased because I'm a South Carolina fan. but you know, I just feel that um, at our recruits coming in, two is really going to make a mark for our team. Maybe three. Maybe three. Because I don't want to really put Bree Hall out because she she's a dog. She she plays like – it's hard to explain. She plays like like she wanted. Like, like I, I, it's kind of hard to really explain what I'm trying to say. But it's like she plays for her to be a, a, a freshman coming in, and she, she has a lot of maturity to her game, and that's what I like. Iowa can win. Iowa State can win. That's yeah. 10. That's 10. 
I don't think Iowa can compete. Iowa can compete. I don't think they can win a championship. I don't think yeah, they can. I, I would say that. I feel they could make like that. Maybe that Elite Eight or Sweet Sixteen. I don't see them really winning it all. It's, it's really it's, it's really a thing of getting hot at the right time. So they made the Sweet yeah. Sixteen push last year. Shoot, if them Jokers come back better. They're pretty much returning everybody. They didn't add anything, which I wasn't a fan of. Tommy and I talked about this last time, I believe. And um, but it's just like if you get hot at the right time, like Arizona got hot at the right time last year. They weren't the best Definitely. team you know they weren't a top two team in the country they got hot at the right time and Ari mcdonald was the leader of it if iowa gets hot at the right time and caitlin clark's the leader of it you're going to see the exact same thing that arizona did this season that, that's just it's my a pos- it's a possibility I, I, I wouldn't i wouldn't write it off it's 10 teams that could win it this year but we all know who's coming out with it i mean they just go ahead and y'all could go ahead and head on they could just go ahead and, and size our fingers up and go ahead and get the you know what I mean? Because uh, this this is in the bag, man. Don't nobody want to admit that because you know everybody loves their team, like me. Everybody probably looking at this like he's saying he's saying what he's you know what I mean. Basically, he's saying the same thing. Yeah, I love my team, but I just feel we got it, man. This is in the bag, and people just don't understand what kind of problem they got coming towards us. Matter of fact, if you go to the our little group our little group chat, we had a little link to see how many McDonald All Americans and ballers you got to go up against. It, it, it's going to be a lot of problems. Well, it's Division One basketball. Like everybody's team is full of McDonald's All Americans, you know. Not everybody. It's, not everybody. It's not one or lost on how fast you are. Like it's just like it's like a relay race, right? A relay race isn't one on how fast you are individually. It's the ability to pass the baton to the next person. And UConn again is the best, well oiled, best coach team. They got the best fundamentals. They can play. UConn is a better ball club, and that's going to win. All right, well, but before we close this video and get into some videos, let's go to the uh, the playoffs, all right? All right, so so I asked you guys before we recorded, have you guys been keeping up with uh, the semifinals that you watched the games last night? First, yes, first things first, man. Thing. Some beautiful basketball. Some beautiful basketball has been played this entire postseason. I don't think there's been <laughs> – maybe Minnesota and Chicago has been the only, like, mad close game out of all of these. These have all been really good games. These, this yeah. was a good game. This was a good game. Well, uh, well, this game was kind of, uh, you know, Chicago, Dallas scared them in the third quarter, then Chicago pulled away. So I guess you could – but all of them were, were relatively good. And then uh, these two games were amazing. So um, I guess just what would you guys think of those games and uh, who do you have winning it all? Well, so- um, the games from last night was pretty good. Um, that uh, Connecticut and uh, Chicago game that 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 was that was a nail biter. That was pretty good. Was, them girls was going at it. Um, even the, the Phoenix Mercury and Las Vegas Aces uh, game was pretty good too. And I I kind of didn't catch the ending part of that, but I watched it to maybe like halftime. So I didn't really catch the second half. But um, from what I seen, it was uh very interesting. It was it was a good series between both both I mean both both teams. How'd you watch it until halftime, Terrell? Listen, not like basically watch it. I was listening to it because I have a little app on my phone that you could like pick up some of the games. So okay. I was listening to it, but I didn't like, you know, literally watch it. That's why I fell asleep on it, listening to it. But, okay, because um, okay, cause, cause I, I, I didn't want to call you out on it, but, but I, you know, it was, you know, because the first half, the other game was on. It was on, yeah, it was, it was on ESPN. No, the, uh, the, the Aces game did come on ESPN. Um, ESPN yeah, too. Yeah, no, no. It, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was on ESPN U, and it was on um. You know, if you pulled it up on the app, you could watch it in the meantime and stuff. But the yeah. the Connecticut Chicago game ran late, so so that's why I was asking about the first. Yeah. Game. So the, the the Aces game, cause like I said, I was listening to it, and like it came on after the Aces game and all that went off. So we caught it like maybe into the a little bit after the first quarter, but um, yeah, it was it was going pretty good. Yeah. I really, I really was upset about. Um, I was really upset about Phoenix, uh, about uh, Phoenix losing to Chicago. Um, I'm sorry, not to Chicago. Vegas. Yeah, that I, that that bothered me. I really don't want to see Chicago win um, anymore either. I'm not a Candace Parker fan. Oh, I know you're gonna hate that. Um, I'm not. I'm not a <laughs> yeah, I, and 
And Connecticut is like really one of my. Uh, they were one of my underdog teams. I really, I love with John Quill Jones. You said uh, your underdog teams. They were the number one seed. See how you confidence talk. Okay, guy, I'm gonna let you go, Tommy. I'm gonna let you go. Yeah, Tommy. like I mean, when the season when the season starts, like you know, Connecticut again is gonna be a competitive club, but not. You never expect Connecticut's son to just go win the championship. Like that's not. Like you don't you don't think them like they're not. That's the first fair. Team that's fair. That's fair. Um. But just the way that they play, like I really like Connecticut. If I if they won, I'd be happy with that. With of the teams that are left, I would like to see Phoenix win, just because I don't want to see. I really don't want to see Vegas win, even though I like Bill Lambert and Kelsey. Um, so it'd be, it, to me, it would why, why, be. Why didn't you name Major in that? You, you shout or not? Because you know that that yeah, you, you know that 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 South that South Carolina <laughs> that South Carolina drama. You know we're gonna take we're gonna take the chip. You know that's just gonna. That's going to solidify why Asia has her statue at South Carolina once she gets this chip. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it is what it is. You know what I mean? So, yes, my, no who I want I'm to win. This right now, there is no justification in the world. And anybody on YouTube, if there's somebody on YouTube who could really explain, there's no reason why that young lady has a statue on her campus. She is it, not. She, she's, like, she's like the mother of South Carolina basketball. Man. They, if, if South Carolina basketball becomes a thing, and we don't know now, because like Tommy said, like they're just winning right now and they're getting good players right now. But if Don leaves, that whole thing could change, right? So we don't know. But if they establish something where in 10, 20 years, they're still winning, they're still bringing in the top players and everything like that, Asia Wilson kicked that off. So she's they the mother of South Carolina basketball. They have a statue of Don and not a statue of Asia. Asia was a player. Like it's a team sport. See, that's the difference. Like that's why UConn don't have jer- names on the back of their jersey because it's one unit. So whatever happened that year, Asia might have been the anchor, but it was a team. She ain't go out there and win all them games. She ain't the, she's not the sole reason that Aaliyah Boston and all these young girls are there now. It's a team sport. So you get a banner for winning championships. Know, she, now, is the the reason, number she is one. the reason. She is the reason why Aaliyah Boston are there because they actually are Boston in it on their freshman year. You know, why did they want to come there? And they named because of Asia Wilson and because but of they play together. She went there to go work. She went to go play for Dawn Staley to be a South Carolina Gamecock. See the difference? Again, UConn, we're bigger than the players. It's all about being a Husky, being a UConn Husky, not being Brianna, Brianna Stewart, not being Maya Moore, not being Sue Swin, DT. You go there and you be a Husky and you win. Like, we, if, if that was the case, we'd have statues all around Gamble. We could put two up a year. Only one y'all probably could put up is Maya Moore and Stewie. Y'all probably have oh, about two. Come on now. You could put up. Maybe, could put maybe up Diana. Up. Y'all probably have about three there. If, if, if you really Dale, want to say y'all would be in pain. Diana Taurasi. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Y'all have we, Diana. We got, we got you. If, if you could put up Asia, if you could put up Asia, I could give you a list. I could give you a list of 15 Huskies that could get a statue. Okay, those are Huskies. Statue, right? Those are Huskies. You but also have to South- think about what you did in a professional career. Like, a part of her exactly. getting that statue is the fact that she won MVP in her, like, her third season. Like, okay, I mean, so, so so how many MVPs does UConn have? We've gone through this before, and UConn has, like... They, all got, they, they got championships. They got gold medals. They, 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 not, they not going... There's only one MVP a year. Okay, Asia won. But, I mean, those... The, so when, okay, when so 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 according to that, according to that right criteria, there's about five, six Huskies. There's no sixteen. There's there's a there's a, there's a there's a good group of them. There's a good group of them. Swin Swin went right to the league and turned Detroit from the worst team in the league to winning the WNBA championship, and she was the leader of that team. That was that was that was that was when Sue um when Sue came in, Seattle was trash. Her and Lauren Jackson got busy over there. Like she still was the number one pick because they were trash. Like they, like these girls, they come in and they make it. When you look, let's see. Let's go one. Okay. Two. So, um, you uh, South three, Carolina. Every a lot of the girls from South Carolina made it to the playoffs four, this year. You got Ty Harris. You got Alicia Gray. You got you got. You mean come on? You got is this plenty? I got four. Y'all got four. I think Kayla Davis is playing five. on Chicago. I, I, I gave y'all five six. Y'all got four. And that's fine. I'm talking about coming in and just making impact. Like WNBA, it's not like UConn Huskies. If they didn't come in and, and become MVP, cool. But they've all come in and being like, because Tina Charles, Tina Charles came in. I mean, she's on that list right there. But at the same time, they all came in and made impact. Like they don't come in and just be no shabby. Like, oh, you gonna sit the bench? Like those young, they come in and they play and they make a difference on their team. Straight or up. Or a statue. 
Don't change the argument, Tommy. For a statue, part she of the reason didn't is what she statue. did in the professional ranks. Part of what she did in the professional ranks is the reason why she got a statue. It's like it's like in high school, right? You you could be so an all right player in high school, right? Yeah. But 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 if you go to college and you you become this like college celebrity basketball player, your high school is gonna retire your jersey just because it's a good look. Like I went to uh, high school with, with a uh, someone on the Braves, right? And like in high school, our baseball team didn't do anything. They didn't win any state championships. They were like had one good regular season in his time in high school. That was it. And they retired his jersey because he plays for the Braves. My center on my high school basketball team was Rob Gronkowski. He don't have a statue. Oh. Like, like that's that. It, it, it just don't happen like that. Like he, well, Rob, yeah, that's, that's my just, dog. That that's my dog, you. Grok. He's a good man. That just goes to show you that they, they, they don't put him on that level like that. Like I said, South Carolina, we don't have stars they, coming they, out they, of they, our. We don't produce stars like that out of our university. They, 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 so they retired his jersey. One, good one. No, they didn't retire his jersey. Oh, your high school tripping. Nah, yeah, exactly. For, for that's on your high school for basketball or football but we got a we got a ton of players like we have a lot of players that are in the M nfl like or that have retired they ain't grog they ain't grog you know, we got some good, <laughs> yeah, good players though we got, they're not grog gronk is one of the greatest if not the greatest tight end ever shout out to they're Tony not, gonzalez they're, they're, I want to say he gronk. should have his jersey retired at his high school <laughs> gronk is asia, asia played player. part asia played part in that olympic team getting that gold medal Asian but 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 that but, but that was after the statue was up. So so that's not. I know that, but what I'm saying, I'm talking about as far as in reasons why she should have that statue. That's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to say that's the reason why she got the statue. I'm just saying she's Can, a Candace Parker player. should get a statue in Tennessee. Yeah, I would I would agree with yeah. that. Either I'm Hall, either Hall, either Pat her Pat or she should be a Tennessee. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I think she has one. Yeah, Pat. Pat I believe has a Candace, statue. either has a I believe either Candace Parker or Shamika's whole whole school should have a statue. Nah, you can put their jersey up. You, you can put their jersey up. It's a team sport. You know, you don't get no statue. You don't get no. You don't, you don't get no statue. What? That's spell, crazy. I don't spell Pat Summit wrong. The but men's yeah. sports. The men's but sports. Gino's you know gonna get one. Gino's you know gonna get one when he retires. Yeah, but I don't think Maya Moore should have a statue. Like, you know, I don't feel like a because team because player. Maya Moore isn't the mother of UConn basketball. She didn't exactly. start it. I don't Asia think Wilson started it. Like Sells or um, what's her name? Karen, um, the lady. I forget her. Yeah, I forget her name. But she was the star player before Rebecca Lobo got there. I, you don't when you it's a team sport, and if you are that great, they retire your jersey to you give you your individual accolades. But nah, you don't get no statue. Look how look how many greats y'all y'all have a lot of great players came out of that that that, that spilled out of UConn. So that like he said, they're they're not the I mean, even though you said that, that one player was the beginning of UConn's like tradition of winning and everything, it, it it hits totally different when you compare the school as far as in South Carolina and UConn. Like UConn, you expect that out of the years of them producing those kind of players. With South Carolina, they wasn't even on the map to have a player like that. So when they produce something like that. It was a big thing for the state. So it was like, yeah, you know, we're going to give her a statue for this. You know what I mean? Because didn't know other players we have come through here. They even thought about trying to propel us to a championship. So her getting that and, and like Rashad say, her having MVP, all that counts. So they was like, yeah, you know, we're going to throw, throw a bone, give her a statue. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm not mad at it. And I feel if they was to throw Maya Moore uh, a statue, you couldn't be mad at that because she's, she's a player. She's a baller. Like, I couldn't be mad. I wouldn't talk junk and be like, oh, she don't deserve that because, you know, she, she made her impact. Her name what rings bells when you say her name. Uh, no, UConn name ring bells. And, and my Moore just happened to be a great that went there. She, it, it's a team sport. And we all have, they all, I'm going to say we, we all Huskies. So it's, it, it's not, it, we don't, we're not highlighting one person over another. Paige is just as important to our team as P.I. Now, Paige yeah, got a if, bigger role. But they both Paige, Huskies. But if Paige was to win the next two or three championships before until she leaves, I, I couldn't I couldn't even question why she got if they gave her one why she got it. You know what I'm saying? See, our, our measurements are different because see we you know that that's not statue worthy. It, it, see that's for that's for your fans. That's that's for your fans. But I'm talking about if the school decided that they feel she's legendary status to give her a, a statue. I wouldn't. I wouldn't argue that. See, the fans gonna be like, "Oh, well, you know, we have standards, and we always win, so we feel that." And she shouldn't. She shouldn't deserve that. 
But if your team didn't have them loving championship standards and y'all just happened to win one and Maya Moore was the one who bought it and they gave her a statue, you'd be like, well, I, I couldn't be mad at that. Cause like, look where we was at before she came. So like I say, yeah, y'all had right. years of rolling championships out and having these standards to be at the top that, yeah, of course y'all not gonna make a big uproar. Of course, having a statue for somebody, you're gonna buy, yo, it's a team game. You know, we do this. This is what we do, we win. So Look I don't coach. feel one Look person. Side note. Shout out coach. <laughs> Kieran Pitt. Yeah, Kieran oh, I'm Kieran sorry, Pitt. I I I didn't I didn't mean to uh to kill the to kill the vibe or anything. I just saw coach, so I had to shout her out. <laughs> uh, but you know, I you know, like I said, man, you know, even though you know, I, I do a lot of joking when it comes to UConn. I respect UConn because you know they have tradition. Like you said, they're well, they're well oiled machine with you know the way Gino run his program. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I give them respect, and I'm not going to be the type of fan that's going to be like, don't give them the accolades or what they deserve. Yeah, but you know, it's just like I guess like how Mike Tyson used to knock out everybody, or or um, Floyd Mayweather. You know, people pay just to see them lose. You know what I'm saying? You get tired of seeing them win. You be like, man, I want to see them. So that's kind of like the the beef I got with UConn. You know what I'm saying? It's not personal. I'm just tired of them winning all the time. So yeah, I was the one and to say, you know, yeah, I don't like it. And you're right. You made it. You made it very clear. It's not even. It's a, it's it's an apple to an orange. You know what I mean? Like y'all y'all winning. Y'all, y'all again. We're a winning team. Y'all competitive team. So Yo, y'all what do y'all think about this team. list? They got Oregon at number seventeen. All time. Oh, that's kind of high. You said of all time schools. Yeah, they they didn't even have them twenty twenty Oregon. Ugh. They didn't even have a tournament Who's to even prove this. She did this that no one R P Kobe. I hope number one is that thirty nine and no UConn team. Let me see. Sixteen Rutgers. Fifteen. Oh, there you go, South Terrell. Carolina. I'm shocked they put us in there. I, I think we can move it. Fourteen ninety five. You uh, Geno's first. Okay, it's first. Okay, I thought yeah, that, that was, was like first. State. 13, Texas Tech, 93. Delta State's in here a lot. Number 12, Delta yeah, State. Yeah, they, well, they used to have a lot of really good clubs. Number 11, 2019, Baylor. That was a – that was a – who's senior year? I think that was on Kalani's uh, senior year. Yeah. Texas, 86, number 10. I mean, do you think, think, do you think Baylor's still going to be one of the top powerhouses this year? Do I think so? Yeah, I, I think I think ju- just because of uh, Nalissa Smith and you know they they have a good coaching staff there. Shout out to uh, uh, Coach Colin, Nikki Colin. Uh, I, I think they're gonna have a decent squad. Do Do I think they're gonna be like the? Oh, see, look, listen to the shade. But do I think they're gonna be like the squad, like you know, top four? I I don't know. It's that's a huge change to make, and then losing Moon Arson as well. But I mean, I think they're gonna be in the mix. You know, a lot of times when you have that talent. And still the same talent. And Nikki Collin was coach of the year just a couple of years ago in the WNBA. You know, and she recruited pretty well for our coaching staff as well. So I think they're they're going to be good. I mean, this year they're going to be good just because of all the, the leftovers from Kim Mulkey. But I think in a couple of years they're still going to be good just because of that coaching staff that she's assembled over there. They got this list wrong. That, 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 that number four should have been number one. Number two. Oh. 98, and then 2016. So the four in a row. Four uh, in a row titles. I guess, I guess we'll, we'll take that. But it was, he said, we'll number four. It. Number four and number one should have been flipped around. Shout there, out was no team, there was no team beating that, that UConn team that year. 39 and 0. Yeah, nobody was beating them. Like, I, I, I still don't think that I've seen a club that could have beat them. I don't even think Stewie's, Stewie's Huskies could have beat them. I think they probably gave uh, 2016 number one because they won four in a row. Yeah. But all right, guys, if you are new to the channel, this is a road to 2K subs. We are about to be back shortly, reacting to some videos real quick. Fellas, uh, shout out your social media or whatever the heck you want to plug right now. If you have an event coming up that you want to promote, whatever the heck you want to do right now. Uh, just follow follow the channel, man, road, road to 2K. Um, that's all I got for you. I don't have a channel. My Insta is out there, but yeah, y'all don't really want to follow me. Well, hopefully, I I have I have a channel um starting up in about um hopefully by the summertime, right around the time when the uh, women's uh, basketball season is towards the middle of the season. I'm not gonna say the beginning, 
So hopefully I have that up and going so that way I can have you guys come on the channel and we can have some good debates there too. But um, like I said, shout out to Rashad's channel, you know, say Road to 2K, it's all good. We trying to give Rashad these 2Ks, 2Ks, so y'all hit that, hit the subscribe button and click that. Paige that said, button. I talked to Paige. Paige said, I'm not coming on until you hit 2K. Right, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Paige, if you're watching this, don't. Oh, I can't go on this channel. He lies. Man. No, no, Paige. It was a joke. It was a joke, Paige. We're trying to get Paige on though. So, uh, I don't know. I don't think 2K subs will have any difference to do with it. But, uh, yeah, yeah. You guys can do whatever you feel like doing. Whatever the heck. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Be safe. Wash your hands. Do your research on the vaccine. And just take the thing. Because, uh, yeah. Anyways, next video. <laughs>